はい玉の花親のパイロットになろう始まりました、えー、こんにちは、えー、この番組は FM 機能は毎週木曜、えー、午前11時そして翌週、えー、毎週火曜日 FM 宮古にいて、えー、お送りしておりますパイロットになるための情報をお届けする番組です、えー、少しでも、ね、この情報がですね皆さんにとって、えー、パイロットになってもいいかなとか、えー、パイロットになるための情報として、えー、お届けできればいいかなと思っておりますえー、今日はですね、先週に引き続き、えー、友達のニクさんをお迎えしております。えー、ただし今日はですね、えー、第2弾というところで、えー、全て英語で、えー、お届けしたいと思っています。えー、ニクの方は英語が得意なのであの、全然問題ないんですけども、私の方がちょっと緊張してるんですけども、<笑>えー、そうやってちょっと英語版で今日はお届けしたいと思います。では1時間よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。あなたの広告、街中で大きく宣伝してみませんか伊佐交差点近くの大型ビジョンデジタルサイネージなら交通量の多い国道58号線沿いで PR に最適です毎月1万円から掲載可能広告内容も幅広く対応していますお問い合わせは9341111クレド株式会社までゼロ一二ゼロ四九七七五五。ムービング沖縄で検索。あなたの人生に輝きを。たくさんの仲間に出会える場所。人生の喜びを発見できる場所。それがベタニアチャージです。苦しんでいる人、悩んでいる人。一度訪れてみてください。九八八四七八二。沖縄ベタニアチャージ。君の心に溶けて手作りのお味噌をシフォンケーキで優しく包む聞く味噌加工を醤油めこぼう味噌屋が作る味噌シフォンケーキ八重瀬のゆめこぼう軽自動車の時代軽がマンドイビンド長浜モーター鈴木の新型ソリオカ。映画やシャイビンド。長浜モーター。ギノワン中古車街道ど真ん中。黄色い建物が目印。軽自動車のスーパー。長浜モーター。ギノワンヒルズ通り。旧名米語通りにはいろんなお店が。ショッピング、カフェ、飲食、雑貨、そして絶景の夜景スポット。新しいギノワンの楽しみ方がきっと見つかる。ギノワンヒルズ通り。天満宮から伊佐交差点へとつながる坂道、ギノワンヒルズ通りに遊びに来てね。はい、じゃあ、これからですね、あのニックさんに登場いただきますけど、まず一回、一回。well、let's say everything in English, right?。everything okay, in English. okay, well、uh,。could you please introduce yourself?。yes、uh,。my name is nick、uh,。i'm a friend of tama and i've known him for a very long time。over 25 years i think。yeah、i think so。and、uh,。currently、uh,。learning to be a pilot。in the united states。But I come back to Okinawa to visit my、uh, family and, of course, my friend, a real good friend of mine, and、uh, here to hopefully answer some questions and give people some、uh, information on what it takes to be a pilot,、uh, not only in the United States, but on the international scale as well. That's great.、Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you pretty much the same thing that I did、okay. last year, last, last class, last week,、okay. <laughs> last week、uh, about、uh, your. You know, the story. Okay. okay. And、uh, when we met, sure. Take the Nero Club 20,、right. 25 years ago. And then what are you doing now? Okay. And what are you going to do next few years? Okay. And then a miracle story about sure. the United States. Absolutely. Right? The climax of the show. Okay.、Sure. Well, let's start with the.、Um, Uh, back in Kadena、uh, Flight Training Center 20, 25 years ago. Yes. I think I met you at the、uh, training center. Yes. And then、uh, working for both,、uh, working for the、uh, Japanese base, I mean the Japanese、yeah. Air Force yeah, base. Yeah, I was in、right? LC. Yeah, you were at MLC. What,、right. what did you do there?、Um, I worked for a program there that basically helped、uh, the on base people find things to do off base, like recreation stuff.、Like、oh,、that. okay. And, you know, okay. for example, like y o k o s a n d o Cave or Expo Park or you know, where to go eat a romantic dinner or you know, beaches,、okay. fishing hobbies. It's kind of like an information help desk. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, it was pretty fun, but、uh, like everything else, it was a job. And、uh, I've always had an interest in flying airplanes, and I didn't really want a job anymore, I wanted a career. But unfortunately,、uh, at that time,、uh, flying is very expensive.、Um, at that time, too, Okinawa was,、uh, didn't really have much as far as flying is concerned. 
So that was the reason I went, came to the Aero Club, met you, to find out um, you know, different ways of learning to be a pilot. Okay. That's how I met you, and that was 25 years ago. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. that when he came in. Hey, I want to be a pilot. Right. I said, you know, it's great. Why don't you join it? And then, then he said, I'm the MOC. I right. don't have the uh, privilege to use the Aero Club. Right. And I said, well, too bad. Right. And then we asked the manager, Bobby Sloan, remember? Yes. And um, that's what I was saying. You know, you cannot. Right. Um, but we did do a, a ground school. Yes, you did. We did, you did. That school. was great. That's a great start, right? So that was a great start. And uh, that was uh, 25 years. And like everything else in life, um, you know, the dream never died. Yep. It's just that sometimes you got to take a break and kind of figure out, you know, what path can you take to make that dream come true? And in some cases, it's taken well over 25 years to get to where I am now. And that's when we come to the point frame where I'm currently attending a flight school in Arizona, learning to be a professional pilot. Yeah. And right now I'm on a winter break and once again, visiting you to give you some information on what I'm learning in the industry and the uh, hiring practices of the pilot shortage and uh, some challenges on getting to the school, uh, challenges during school, and once again, the, the future as a professional pilot. As well. That's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I know you're doing that, but the uh, things change. You know, the, between you know, 30, 25 to 30 years ago yes. to now, right. it's a big change because when I when you come, when you came to the Aero Club you know, 25 years ago, uh, there's not such like big pilot short shortage. That is correct, correct. So we have to go through a regular process. Right. But I was amazed that when you stopped by the office last year, I think last summer, right. you stopped by the office and yeah. I was like, it's been 20 some years, right? Yes. And then I'm like, wow, wow, Nick, you are going to be a pilot. Yes. And it's been 20 some years and I ask her, your age, how old are you? And they say, 40, 47. 47, right? Yes. I said, well, it's good in the States, but the, what's the reality? I right. ask, ask you. Right. So what was the uh, answer from the uh, flight school and the airlines? Well, uh, as the industry has it, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but there is a pilot shortage, not just in the United States, but also worldwide as well. And I don't have exact numbers right now, but uh, Boeing has forecasted there's going to be a few hundred thousand pilots short. Yeah, it's over 800,000 pilots short in the next 20 years. Right, which is a problem for the airlines and, and flying industry, but if, it's, uh, if your dream is to fly airplanes for recreation, or in this case professionally, it's a good time for pilots, bad time for the airlines, because they need pilots really bad. Right. Um, the pay has increased as well, big, uh, big time. a lot. <laughs> Uh, for example, the flight school I attend, uh, they have regular meetings where the airlines come to try to recruit students or show an interest uh, in the students to come work for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have uh, incentives for the students to fly with the airlines with the bonuses uh, when they join the airlines, um, assistance with finances as far as once you complete the flight school, they offer to help pay for your flight school as well, though it's a small percentage. Um, it's just a really good time to come into the industry if you're thinking about it right now in the United States. Right. Uh, same time, um, people might think, well, Nick, that's the United States, yes. But also at the same time, in Japan, they're also forecasting a shortage as well. Yes. And the reason for that is because of mandatory retirement age of 65. Yes. And I think uh, very quickly, uh, the major airlines in Japan will have to figure out a way to bring in some pilots to help offset the retirements with the newcomers coming in. Yeah, I remember that Nick, he showed me the uh, the website that uh, one of the several several Japanese airlines yes. hiring the foreign pilots. The right. website yes. that was amazing. You know, they're looking for the pilots just so bad. Right. Um, and the whole reason for that, I think, is because for the U.S. foreign pilots, it's it's cheaper to train in this case the states. But unfortunately, the cost of training in Japan is so high that the Japanese pilots, the funds that actually can afford a loan or the money, had to fly to the states to learn. Mm -hmm. So I think. In a, in a nutshell, that uh, it contributes to probably the, the shortage in pots in Japan. Right, right, it, right. it seems like the, I don't want to say this, it's like the rich kids can afford a school, can become pilots, whereas the kids that can't afford it cannot be, which is not really fair. Right. However, in the States, it's an equal uh, ballpark for everybody because you don't really have to have money. It's like going to college, you apply for a loan, get accepted, and you go train. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I know there's a lot of the scholarship for the college university. Sure. What about the flight school? Um, I don't know of any uh, scholarships right now, but there are some, um, I guess, lending institutions in the United States, not necessarily banks, but lending institutions that actually cater to us exactly. For example, Sally May is a big one. Um, Wells Fargo is another one. 
Um, the AOPA actually has uh, loans for folks that want to become student pilots and things like that. Is it all in La Plata, the U.S. citizen? I don't know. Um, I don't know about the yeah, Guinness, that question. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that, but I probably assume that only apply to your citizen. Correct. Well, that's the big part of for our, you know, local national here and right. even the citizen right. because the uh, tuition cost is so expensive. Right. Um, of course, they can get paid as a flight instructor later, sure. but right. they have to pay in front, you know, in right. front, but they probably, you know, close to $100,000 for everything, like including the tuition fee and sure. the college fee and everything. So I'm that, kind of thinking that, that I'm thinking maybe uh, for like the local Japanese students in Japan, there's got to be some type of financial assistance for education that they could, I guess, apply. They should be able to do that. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, I'm not sure about the, that applied to every every single applicant. Maybe selected, you know, the age limitation or gotcha. whatever. But right. uh, there is some limitation there. Right. But uh, let's go back to the your you know your, your training. I know you you want to start it age of 47 last year yes and then I was so uh, surprised but I was so happy sure. that you still have that passion because mm -hmm. it's been 20 years right but I still have like yeah. a big passion I want to be a pilot sure. so I finally decided I'm gonna do it right. and then it was great and then um, you know you went to the one of flight school got a flight level evaluation sure and then you got a you know you're good right, like right. a pass right sure. that's great job yeah you know? that's um, good it's it's very scary but it does take uh, the support in this case of my family and friends and guys like you because it really is something you can't do by yourself because I'm not 20 years old anymore I'm an older person so I do have my uh, <laughs> doubts but uh, with the support of my friends and family and stuff gave me the, the encouragement or the courage to pursue this mm -hmm. uh, is it scary absolutely <laughs> is it hard it's hard mm -hmm. uh, flying is easy the studying the preparation the simulator work is the hard part but the actual flying part for that uh, lesson, it really isn't hard, you know, once you get the hand. But the, it's the preparation is the hard part. So, in other words, preparation is important to to make your flight training success. Absolutely. Uh, for example, my schedule, um, I'm supposed to be available to the flight school seven days a week. I typically fly six days a week, and for me, it's Monday through Saturday. My instructor likes to have Sunday off, so we have Sunday off, which is nice. <laughs> okay. uh, we, uh, the flights are usually about 1.5 hours to maybe two hours or more. Um, fly once a day, but sometimes we'll fly twice a day. Wow. Um, earliest flights sometimes are at 6:30 uh, a.m. Um, <laughs> six thirty take off. Yeah, six or so. <laughs> I'm on the flight line at you know 4:30 in the morning, free flighting. It's cold. Yeah. It's very miserable. <laughs> oh man. Uh, then of course you come back, you uh, debrief. Right. Um, then if the instructor's got an opening, I never say no. I say hey, we'll fly at two o'clock, three o'clock. Can you do it? Yes. <laughs> Then you have to hurry and prepare again. That's right. Know? That's right. But uh, it's it's exciting. Um, has a great future, and I think I'm very grateful to be allowed this chance this late in life to do something I really wanted to do. Yeah, because that's you want to do that since you were like age of four. Right? Yes, sir. Wow, that's, yeah. that's great. So in your school, um, you have know, the 40s, 48 right now. Yes. How many other like 40s or 50s do you have? Any? Um, that's a good question. Right now, um, there aren't very many. Um, I can right now I can think of maybe six or seven guys that are about in the age group about eh, about 40 to 50 years old. Majority of students at my school are between. I think the youngest I met was 18. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was pretty young. <laughs> My instructor is 22. <laughs> young. <laughs> They're very young. So I think the majority of the students there are between the ages, I'd say about 20 to 30 okay. is a good good guess. Okay. Yes. So 30 years old instructors should have a lot of flight experience. They should. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think they are decided to stay at the flight instructor job you said one day, one job. Exactly. Right. Because uh, as we all know, uh, there's the uh, flying uh, rule that says you know in order to get to or qualify for the airlines it has to have you have to accrue 1,500 hours that's right that's so that's right. a long time I only have 42 and a half right now so I have a long way to go but uh, it's it's definitely an adventure a very good but adventure. you got a 42 some hours and then uh, you plan to finish everything uh, probably this month you're gonna go back to the states pretty soon right yes so you are planning to finish up your private pilot training within um, about 20 more hours. Okay. So probably by the end of this month, you know, if we have good weather, um, because as you know, flying is dependent on the weather. So sure. if the weather's good, like it is in Arizona, mm -hmm. um, 
odds are I'll probably be done by the end of the month unless I make a mistake or <laughs> not studying or preparing. So yeah. during the training, there's a, some progress check and a stage check you have to go through? Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh. As you know, Tommy, you're the expert, but uh, <laughs> you have your private pilot, mm -hmm. actually. And within the private pilot, uh, I guess it would be the private pilot uh, uh, umbrella, mm -hmm. um, the first uh, stage check that we have is what they call um, takeoff and landings or TOLs. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're preparing to meet or exceed the FAA recommendations for, you know, basically takeoff and landings. Right, right. Um, it sounds simple, but to do it per the uh, airman certification standards, it's really not that simple. Uh -huh, yeah, mm -hmm. Because uh, as you know, Thomas Tom, uh, every time you fly, there's a new variable, you know, crosswinds, tailwinds, headwinds. Oh man, you're number three in holding because there's so many airplanes that'll land, or you can't take off because you have to hold short, you're number five. There's so many different things going on. That's right. So. That's the first part. It's the takeoff and landing. Like you said, stage check. Is that uh, during the, uh, the the tower 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 operations? Yes. Control yeah. tower. Yeah. So right now we're flying. I'm flying in uh, what they call Class D or Delta airspace. Okay. So we do have full tower support. Okay. Um, if we fly away from the airport, we can request radar following, which is kind of nice, and that basically allows the uh, an extra safety buffer, so the tower can watch you go to and from where you need to go. Which is kind of. Is nice. that a stage two? You're gonna go cross country. Yes, that's that's what I'm working on pretty soon okay. after I do my solo. So once we do the takeoff and landings uh, preparation, and if you pass, which I did, I passed that last month, thank God. Uh, next is what we call solo preparation. That's what I'm working on right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you got a stage one, two, three, I think. Yeah. So it would be uh, takeoff, landing, solo prep, and after we go solo, he's like cross country. Cross country. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, you know the the ATC control things. I just remembers reminds me the. Uh, you know, when I got my training in the United States, yeah. I'm typical Japanese, I couldn't speak a good English. So I was I was so frustrating talking to the tower. Right. Uh, okay. I, I do remember the first day, try to get the ATIS. It oh. took me a day to understand it. I mean a day. Yeah. For just maybe, you know, twenty seconds, yeah. 25 oh. seconds. It took me a day to understand it. Right. Then when I talk start talking to ground control, that oh. tower control, it was so hard for me it's to do that. It's because I thought I'm Japanese, right. right? But when I got a job in Kaduna, as a flying instructor, my students are American like you. Right. And they're, I expect them to speak like really good, but they, uh, they feel like, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't understand what they're saying. Yeah. I say, you don't understand what they're saying. This, yes. They're talking in English. Right. No, they're not English. No, yeah, that's, that's English. <laughs> that's a different kind of English. Is that right? So you yes. feel the same thing? I still struggle. Oh, you don't get it? Oh, that feel me. <laughs> oh my God. it's. Yes, it's English, but it's ATC or air traffic control English, and it's different. Okay. And it's fast. Yes. Oh my God, it's I miss I want to say I miss calls all the time. It's 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 very hard. Yeah. And like like you said, Thomas, on like when you start the airplane, you gotta first make your call to ground, you know, to, to clearance. Right, right. Then the ground. Then ground will pass you up to the tower. Mm -hmm. Then to departure. I mean, there's different radio frequencies. So if you're talking, changing radio frequencies. It's. Uh, you feel like a one-man band. Yeah. You know, like flame with the rudders, got the yuck, I'm talking, you change radio. Oh wait, there's an airplane. Hey, you're really busy. Your mind is just so busy. Yeah, I remember when I used to fly with a, uh, my instructor Japanese, you know, when I was right. a private pilot. Right. Because like you said, I have to use my left hand for the control wheel, right, right. hand the throttle, wow. and then a foot for the rudder pedal wow. and everything. Wow. And then I didn't have a headset back oh. then, so I have to use a microphone, oh. right? Oh my god. Then I was so busy, I asked my instructor, hey, can you please help me with the microphone? He said, no, you gotta do it. I need one more hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm talking about? I know. But at least I have a headset, though. Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. I didn't have a headset. He, my instructor didn't even put my headset. You gotta use the microphone. I'm like, why? <laughs> I had to. That's, but yeah, it was hard. That's funny you mentioned that because about two weeks ago, I was doing my flights in the airplane. There was a microphone. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> So I asked the instructor, what is that for? <laughs> microphone. He's a microphone. I'm like, for what? <laughs> to talk. I'm like... Oh, what about headset, right? Yeah. yeah I didn't have a headset oh until gosh. I got the probably instrument rating. But okay. Entire private, I got to use a microphone. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So the beginning is next. Yeah. Oh it's very, gosh. very hard. So very hard. you feel the same thing. You, yeah. you feel hard to understand what the ATC says. Yes. And each control is different. Right. It's fast. It's very fast. Um, and uh, you have to listen to what the other traffic said. Absolutely. Right. Because right. uh, sometimes, for example, at the airport we fly in, um, we get big airplanes. We call it uh, we call it Boeing country. So we get your Boeing 737s. Wow. Uh, I think we're one time holding short for a 767. 
Um, <laughs> recently, we couldn't taxi because of the way the airplane is placed. And if we were to taxi behind him, we'd be in his jet wash. He'd probably blow us over. <laughs> so there was four of us, yeah. all training 117s, waiting in line uh -huh. for the 767 to taxi away because we didn't want to get blown over. <laughs> So it's 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 fun. It's scary. It's exhilarating. Oh, it's just it's just many things. Right. But it's, it's definitely exciting, you know. Right, right, right. But uh, once again, I'm, I'm I think I'm very one of the few lucky ones to uh, continue down this path. It's all you know. It's, it's pretty good. That's good. But as coming back to the whole language thing on the tower thing, um, they just say it, t it takes time, and you just kind of learn the the language, the speed. Uh, some of the special things we're saying, like yes. hold short and wait, yeah. you know, hold short or a clear to taxi, you know, clear for departure or clear for takeoff, right. and things like that. Right. Um, things not to, you know, what not to say, and sometimes you just, you know, just say what you gotta say. They say the, they, the rule is just make sure you communicate. You know? That's right, that's right. Yeah. But the important thing you used to enjoy the talking Absolutely. to the radio, flying the airplane, right? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. that's it's important. hard, but I, but I still enjoy it though. That's right. Yeah. And I think that's the key because, you know, uh, as we all know that uh, learning the airplane is fun, but if you, I mean, only if you are willing to learn. Yes. Or only if you love to fly the airplane. Right. If you don't, it's so stressful because it's you have to learn stressful. a lot, read sure. a book a lot. Yeah. You know? uh, so I think you got that big passion for right. 20 some years, more, more close to 40 years, and right. then you start training. Right. And then uh, your other um, teammate is almost 40 some age. Yes. And then, uh, they're doing pretty good. They're doing very well. Um, uh, Teammate, one is uh, one guy's name's Andre. Um, he will start his cross country. Uh, let's see, in about a week actually. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I was two weeks ahead of him, but because I came back for winter break, he is now one and a half weeks ahead of me now. Okay. So how do you guys work together for like flight training? You got to fly together, or okay? So he has a different instructor. And uh, I have a different instructor, but when we're not flying with our instructors, we team up together to practice on the simulator. Um, we compare notes during debriefings. He'll come back and say, hey, you know, the instructor said to do this, and I'm not sure what he's saying. What do you think, Nick? And uh, kind of assist them how to understand things. Of course, same here. Um, if I have any problems or if I'm not understanding something, we try to help each other out. So mm -hmm. Because the book can only teach you so much, mm -hmm. but the actual hands-on during a flight and after flight is where you really learn what the book is trying to teach you. Right, right, right. So have a great partner or friend to uh, balance the ideas off of or to vent stress because it does get stressful. Yes. <laughs> when the instructor says, you did bad, you just want to cry. <laughs> but uh, to have something you can talk to and, and, and go to when you're having a good day or a bad day. Because remember, gonna, they, as Paul says, you know, say, you're going to have a bad day. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a bad day. And one of my bad days was uh, we left uh, Gateway and flew to another airfield about 15 minutes away called Falcon Field. Uh, it was my first takeoff and landings exercise, so I'm brand new, and a little bit how how busy it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I can imagine. I entered a pattern at a 45, like you said, and one thing after another. The ATC is like, hey, sis, uh, you know, Skyhawk 13 Mike, you have helicopter two o'clock. Oh, contact conferred. <laughs> hey, 13 Mike, you have an aircraft three o'clock low. Okay, I'm like, and you're trying to talk, trying to fly the airplane. Trying to understand the, the exercise. <laughs> trying like, oh my god, that was my bad day. <laughs> we did uh, 10 takeoff and landings. Mm -hmm. uh, the first five were great, mm -hmm. kind of hard, but the remaining six, because that's in Arizona coming, in, uh, coming into the afternoon, there's a lot of crosswinds. Mm -hmm. And my first time takeoff and landings, so I don't know anything about crosswinds. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. To do. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, needless to say, I uh, came back, I was wet because it was hot, I was wet because I was nervous, <laughs> extremely frustrated. <laughs> And yes, that was my bad day. Okay. But you learn from it, though, right? Exactly. Yeah, you learn and, a lot. Uh, thanks to your, you know, I think uh, you should appreciate your uh, team. Yes. So that, that they, you can get another another feedback from your you know, team. Right. That's great. That's a great system. It's it's very nice because, uh, like you said, flying is so challenging and there's so many things going on. You really need to lean on somebody when you're having a good day. Like, man, I, I made 10 perfect landings. You want to share that great information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you're having a bad day, like, oh my God. I won't be a pilot. <laughs> I am that bad. And you need someone to talk to as yes, well. Yes. And and everybody will, like just like you, they start laughing, it makes you feel better. So you had a bad day, you talk to your friends, you walk away like it's not so bad. Yeah. Man, we all have bad days. Yeah, you know? Then right. the next day your friend will have a bad day and you're laughing at them. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So it's it's it really is that's a right. team effort. That's you know? right. That's and we good. try to help each other out, which is really nice. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So your instructor's, uh, you said, a 23? <laughs> He's 22 years 22, old. 22. So I could be his dad, <laughs> his father. <laughs> uh, interesting enough, uh, I started in October. 
Um, he interviewed for a job with Delta in November. Wow. And I think he just left for Delta this month. So I did receive a message from him, and he uh, quit the flight school, and we started with Delta. Delta Airlines. You know, Delta Connection, like the original? Or yes, I'm sorry, Delta Connection. Delta like, Connection, yeah, yeah. okay, like original airline. Right? Yes, sir. Oh, that's yep. good. Yeah. So as soon as they got the, um, you said, 1,500 hours, yes. they should be able to step up to the yeah, original I think, airline. Yeah, exactly. I think they had the flow-through program. That's why he picked, um, is it Envoy or Delta Connection? I'm not sure what the, wow. the original is. So once he's... Oh, you said achieve the whatever amount of hours he'll flow right into okay. something like that. All right. Yeah. Well, we we'll talk about the uh, how you can move up on the uh, flight instructor and the regional airline after right. this commercial. Okay. Right. All right. We'll come back. Right. ミソ屋が作るミソシフォンケーキ八重瀬のユメコボ味噌屋が作るミソシフォンケーキ八重瀬のユメコボ芸術同社の時代映画漫画イベント長浜モーター鈴木の新型ソリオか映画やシャイビ
then you turn to base, uh, 20 degrees flaps, 85 knots, then you turn to final make your landing. Pretty easy, right? Just like the book. Well, let's say we now throw in a, a crosswind of only five knots, then what? Well, everything changes, right? <laughs> you might add that little crab or uh, wing low and things uh, like that. So uh, when, when you say steady, that's what we're, you're studying. You know, the weather, your flying techniques, your skills. Uh, oh, don't forget the ATC and radio again, because they're talking right, to you, right. tell what you're doing. They tell you something like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's happened quite a bit. Um, so typically for a two hour flight, I would probably prep maybe five hours or more. Wow. And the reason for that is to make the training more efficient. So for example, that's right. That's right. Um, if we go up in the air and the instructor telling you, okay, come on, do this, do that, do this, that's more time. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind the school is that if you prepare beforehand, when we go for a flight, if you're, in, you're the instructor, I just do what I need to do and you teach me if I'm doing it correctly or incorrectly so we can get more training out of that little bit of time. That's right. yeah. So you're spending pretty much all day long to prepare for the lesson. Now, like you said, uh, six six flights a week, sure. that's almost every day. So it's basically true. every day you spend your time, you know, two, three, five hours right. for one flight. That means almost all day, right? per day, right? Sure. Okay, wow, that's that's a lot of work. Yep, so uh, let's say let's say um, this morning we did a flight at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I would probably get up about 4.30 because I have to go and prep the airplane. And let's say you fly at 7.30, so from 7.30 to the next day, um, thank God you won't have another flight in the afternoon, you'll prepare, and that's very many different ways. The instructor might assign some homework, mm -hmm. or in my case, because um, the school's very high tech, there is a schedule that we study, so you might want to study some of your modules, depending mm -hmm. on when your flight is. Or in some cases, let's say my skills aren't where I want them to be, I might go into a simulator room, because they have simulator, and I can practice the actual flight profile on a simulator mm -hmm. or what I studied in a simulator. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea for that is if I'm proficient in a simulator and I've studied, when I go fly to the next day in the morning, I should be able to do it perfectly is the idea. Okay. So right. you're saying that the simulator is using effectively. Yes. If you don't use a simulator, if you don't prepare prepare for the uh, the lesson and you just showed up on the uh, the flight lesson, you're not going to work. It just, right. just worked. Right? Yeah. So in that case too, if uh, there are some students for whatever reason uh, that show up not prepared, if the instructor, if the instructor knows that they haven't prepared, rather than waste their time, they will actually charge the student, in this case, seventy-five dollars, and cancel the flight mm -hmm. because it's a waste of money to fly the airplane without the student preparing. Yeah. Because the student will actually learn nothing. Exactly. So a lot of people will actually get upset and don't understand that. But if you think about it. Um, if you go for a flight not prepared, how are you supposed to learn and how is the instructor supposed to teach? Exactly. Nothing happens. It's exactly. a lose-lose for both parties. Right, exactly. right. So the whole idea with the fee is just to scare people away into studying and preparing. I think that's the one of the methods that, that we can we can make the student's mindset because once they become the uh, professional commercial pilot, right. you know, they have to go through the commercial Absolutely. budgeted sure. you know, airline training system. Absolutely. There's no, there's no extra margin I mean there's a lot of extra margin so they have they have to finish everything within like you know minimum right sure so, so within standard so that uh, maybe the company may give uh, another opportunity like another another state check or something right. yeah. but that's it if you don't do well you just like oh, see ya bye you yeah. go to different different high school or something right, right. Yep. so I think that that's the important mindset during the private part of right. and he's commercial right. Right. Then once you become a flight instructor, you do pretty much the same thing. You're going to deal right. with uh, you know, brand new students. Right. They may not be able to prepare, and right. you can charge it, and they will they will change it. Oh, I have to yeah. prepare for sure. that. I have to pay? No, right. i got to prepare for that. Right. Yeah. So the whole charge is not to make money. It's, a, it's more of a discipline tool. Exactly. It's to make sure people are studying. Because it is, a, like I said, it's, what, the program takes, on a normal uh, level, a few years, three, four, five years. But what we're doing is you're, you're taking it and squeezing it down to nine months. So you really got to study and be disciplined to do oh, that. That's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. Work. So my typical day, I'm usually at the uh, flight school about I see about ten hours, ten to twelve hours a day. Get there about seven thirty in the morning. Uh, leave about seven thirty eight o'clock at night. But uh, it's not like work where you hate being there. It is hard, yes, but you enjoy it because you're constantly challenging yourself. And that's right. I'm very competitive, so if I can make ten perfect landings or let's say I make five good landings and my partner makes 10, well, well guess what? I only got to practice so I can make 10 landings as well. <laughs> so there is that fair competition 
on uh, trying to help each other out and be good as well. Okay. So that kind of helps each other out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Nick, I want you to tell me your comment about my training. You know, because I've been doing the uh, flight training at the Container Club using okay. the airplane all the time. Right. Because we didn't have the simulator back then. Right. We have little, little like small desktop simulator, but right. we didn't have the big simulator like we have right now. Right. So what I'm doing right now is the um, not using the airplane, just okay. use the simulator. Okay. Because we, I just, I just said that the simulator is a classroom and the airplane is showing me so that we can train everything in the simulator so they can master it absolutely so they can demonstrate it right. their ability in right. the airplane that's right. my my p policy right. so uh, simulator training and the ground training everything before they come to the united states so uh, i will think um they can minimize their actual flight training time right. and also on the, on the ground time right because uh, i understand the uh, right now in the states there are so many students in the states uh, there's a lot of flight instructor but they're not fully experienced flight instructor. Right. Uh, I will say, uh, I heard that the one of the convention, they say that two thirds of the total flight instructor is um, one year or less experience. Yes, that is accurate. That, that is accurate? Yes. Okay, so yep. maybe you're 22 years old and a flight instructor is a professional flight instructor, but right. they don't have like years of experience Correct. in the flight right? right? But they're a professional instructor. Yes. So they don't have experience, so you have to deal with what they're gonna teach you. Right. So I think the, if you prepare well enough, um, for that lesson, I think it's 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 good. But if you don't, it's it's just wasting your money. Yeah. And that's why I try to prepare everything beforehand. So right. we train everything like a private instrument, both ground and oral, right. even oral. Oh wow. Yeah, oral. Okay. Then I do the mic check right. Wow. <laughs> Quite. Because I used to be the FAA examiner, so right. I use the mic mock check right. Okay. So I'm so proud to say that the one of you know the our graduate right. Rhode States. Right. Uh, they have they ready for check right nice. for sure. Of course, the the big problem is they don't have airplane experience yet. Right. They have a simulator experience. So they pass my check right. Nice. You know ACS level right. in the simulator. Wow. Okay. And the oral check right. Okay. ACS level. So they are so proud. They are so have big confidence right. to receive the flight training. So this is what I'm doing right now in the Okinawa. That's that's awesome because uh, a lot of people don't realize. In my opinion, it's just my opinion. The flying part or flying piece is actually pretty easy. You know, go up there, left turn, right turn. You know, uh, you know, you know, trim for this speed, flight level. You know, steep banks, turn them up. Those are like, actually aren't that hard. It's the book part or like you said, the preparation, the preparation for the check ride when they ask you questions. You know, what type of weather is this? Or hey, you see this client cloud? Is that you know, cumulonimbus? You know, the, that's the hard part because. Your instructor can only teach you so much, but is that's when you have to actually have to open up the book and learn all these things. The flying piece, in my opinion, is is the easy part because you're just basically doing. It's like driving a car: mm -hmm. left turn here, right turn here, stop, go, things like that. A little more complex than an airplane, but mm -hmm. generally saying, it's the other things that you don't learn in an airplane that is the hard part. In this case, you know your weather, you know your read speeds, um, just everything in general. That's you know, right. That's it's right. Really hard. Learning the metars, you know, the metars and taps and the weather and you know, how to talk to ATC. I mean, that's all the stuff you can learn in the book. Um, whereas the airplane part, you're finding out that's actually the execution of what the instructor's there for. Make sure you're safe and that you're, you know, practicing to what the, uh, the schedule is. Mm -hmm. But you do agree with a good point. Um, there's a lot of students in my school that, for example, before I started, I uh, took all my exams up front. So I knocked out mm -hmm. my private pilot, the instruments, the commercial, uh, might have helped me, um, commercial. Flight instructor. Flight instructor. Yeah, instructor. Yeah. Yeah, flying charter. So I knocked out four exams up front, which was nice because it allowed me to study the flying portion of the training. That's good. Whereas a lot of folks at my school don't do that beforehand, so they're studying the flying, the actual flying, and also preparing for their exams, and I don't know how they do it. That makes I'm already doing a 10, 12 hour day with what I'm not. They've got to be even more busier than me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, that's, <laughs> wow. It's, it's, yeah. Oh, that's why I heard the one of the flight school that the uh, they said fifty percent of the students would drop out. Sure, and I think it's just they're overloaded, maybe overstressed, or didn't realize how much work it's going to take. Mm -hmm. Even on a normal day for me, it's it can be overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you walk out there, you're scratching your head, like man, that was a long day, mm -hmm. and you know it's only been let's say four or five hours. You go to lunch, you're like man, it's a long <laughs> day. Okay. But like everything else, um, I think if you have the discipline. And I like to call it eyes on the prize, you know, the, mm -hmm. the yoke on a, you know, 737, right. sci-fi, wherever you want to fly, right. uh, that will give you the energy to continue forward, I think. That's right. Yeah. So, have you started cross-country yet, going to different airport? 
Um, so part of the, the the blog for the solo prep that I did, yes. So we did a night cross country with ten takeoff and landings. Okay. And uh, that was a little scary at first because I read through the book. I'm like night night flight, night land day landings are hard. Now I'm gonna do that night with just the lights. This is crazy. <laughs> But what's interesting is once you get up there and you relax and you prepare, it's really not that hard. I actually thought it was a little easier because the air is more stable. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, in my case, I had flown from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, down to uh, down to uh, Pinal Air Park. Mm -hmm. um, we climbed up to about 6,500 feet. Got there in about, about 20 minutes or so. And my first landing, it was probably like the best landing I've ever made. In my life. <laughs> nice great. and super smooth. Oh my gosh, I was pretty happy. Okay. Yeah. Then of course we had to turn around and, and fly back and had to do ten more, and that was a long night. So we started about oh I don't know seven thirty because as you know we had to wait for the sun to go down to be classified mm -hmm. as night. Mm -hmm. And we came back, and by the time I was done, um, I was walking to my car to go back to my room. It's almost maybe ten thirty at night. Mm. Um, so I got back, had late dinner, and had to read a few chapters, and I ended up going to bed about 12 o'clock midnight. That was my day. <laughs> and then so you I, got another flight in the morning, right? Yes. <laughs> and of course, before the night flight, I had a morning, I had a, a wow. morning flight. So almost... You must be exhausted. Oh, yeah. You're smoked. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you go to a different airport, I think uh, we talk about the FBO, which right. you never seen that in Japan, right. but the FBO is stands for Fixed Space Operator. Yes. Um, you know, some... FBO looks gorgeous. Oh yeah. You know, can you tell me about the, what you see in the FBO, like a gorgeous FBO? Well, uh, the ones that we go to, I almost, I'm not going to give any names here, is uh, it's very nice. Uh, it caters to general air, uh, aviation, so your Cessnas and your Pipers, your Archers, and that's which is kind of cool. But this FBO also caters to the big jets. You know, your in this case, our favorite, right? The Gulfstream. Wow. Cool. I, I've seen so many Gulfstreams. I've seen the Cirrus. Uh, the Cirrus single engine jet for Single, them. yeah, Cirrus jet. I've seen those there, met some really cool people. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, one day uh, we had a Gulfstream 6 come through. I met with the air crew, did a tour, um, talked with them, and asked them who they brought to Tucson. And they brought a famous actor to Tucson. Wow. A comedian, actually. I think the name was uh, Chris Rock, I think was the person they brought. Oh. Yeah, and I was very surprised. <laughs> I was like, wow, where's he at? It's like, uh, he smells nice because he has cologne. <laughs> so I didn't get that mean about it. He smells cologne. So, so very interesting. So he came to Tucson for maybe a show or something. I don't know. But it was just uh, him in this very big airplane. So it was kind of cool. So that, um, the FBO is very nice. They have a like a Starbucks coffee bar. They bake cookies there fresh two, three times a day. I mean, it's... For a pilot, it's probably one of the better ones because it allows them to check weather. There's a weather station inside. Um, those pilots are waiting for their customers to come back. Uh, they have a little movie theater, sits 15 people in there. They have some restrooms. I say restroom, like sleeping areas in there that are soundproof to where they can basically sleep and they come back. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. What about the car? Oh, yes. That's right. Uh, that's funny you bring that up. So at the FBOs, because a lot of pilots come through don't have transportation, they do have a fleet of vehicles that you are allowed to use. And believe it or not, they are a fleet of Mercedes Benzes. There's three or four, I don't know what they are, sedans, four <laughs> sedans. And for larger groups, they have two uh, really nice Toyota vans, and those are free for use as well. Wow. Very fancy FBO. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good thing about the um, being in the United States, mm -hmm. seeing load those FBO. Sure. There's a lot of opportunity. I remember that the one I went to San Sacramento, right. um, and also the Santa Monica area. That I, wow. I went to one of the FBO, and there's a rental car. Right. I thought it's a rental car. It's, right. it's a rental car, but it's like here's a key. Yeah. Because I park it, I pay for the parking fee and the refuel fee, right? Right. They said that's free for you. So I'm like, uh, wow. And yeah. I'm, I mean, talking about back in 20 years ago. Sure. Like, wow, I can use this car. Yeah. yeah, I have to go come back like three hours or something. Yeah. But it's still free, right? So yeah. we went to the uh, local, you know, the beach and oh, the, that's awesome. some, you know, the lunch or right. something. Right. It's, it's great. Right. And I hope that kind of facility available somewhere, you know, near Okinawa or Japan. Sure. That would be great. That would be very nice. Because, uh, you know, Japan's a very big country, lots of islands, lots of things to see. I mean, it would be definitely a, a great way to see, see the whole country. That's right. Well, um, after you get your private instrument commercial, now you are moved up to the flight instructor. Okay. Of course, the goal is to to get your flight training is to become a professional pilot. Correct. Looking for like a big jet flight course. Can you tell me about the uh, the hiring uh, status in the states states right now? Right now, um, for those people that are aware of the industry, right now there's uh, they're forecasting what they call a pilot shortage. In other words, there are more airplanes than people to fly in. So if, if anybody is considering uh, a, a time to get into the professional pilot field, the time is now. 
and the whole reason for that is because the uh, mandatory retirement is age 65 and all the major airlines are forecasting a very large number of uh, personnel mm -hmm. that will be retiring. Mm -hmm. So as you know, Thomas, the way it works is uh, you got student pilots. Student pilots go to the regional mm -hmm. and ultimately want to go to the majors or legacy airlines. Mm -hmm. So what hap is happening here is that the major airlines or legacies, those guys who retire, guys like regional, will promote and go to the majors and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what's happening right now is there's so many retirements at the major level that's creating a shortage. Mm -hmm. It's good for you and I because we're students and you want to get to that level you can mm -hmm. in a short amount of time because I think in the past it's been how many years to get to the legacy? Years and years. years. Right. So maybe we'll do it at least. Right now they're looking at maybe three to four years of that. <laughs> and not to mention because of the shortage, um, a lot of the regional airlines are offering incentives to join them and fly for them as well. Because remember now, when they fly to the regional, they're going to go to the legacy, they're going to need uh, pilots to staff their airplanes as well. So for example, at the school I go to, um, the school has, I guess, agreements with the airlines in that uh, because flying is expensive, that the regional airline that you sign up with will help offset the cost of your tuition. In other words, you might not fly for a lot of money, but if you agree to fly for that airline, they will pay you, I don't know, uh, one to five hundred dollars a month to help offset the cost of the training while you're instructing. So you get paid by a flight school to teach students how to fly, and if you have an agreement with the regional, uh, they will help try to offset the cost by giving you, you know, a certain amount of dollars to help, you know, say, pay for you to help pay for your tuition, so ultimately you go fly for them. We didn't have that system of 20 years ago. It's changed. Yeah. And so plus, you will get the uh, the bonus, like a right. entry bonus or something. Right. right. So a lot of airlines, to further entice the uh, student pilots to come with them as well, have bonuses. I've seen the bonuses from, you know, twenty-five thousand or Niap Gojimon all the way up to, you know, you know, fifty thousand dollars. Guacamole just to sign up for them. So it's just it's a if you're thinking about flying and you're worried about paying things like that. Um, it's a really good time to go because I think uh, in the past regional pay was maybe uh, was it 24, 25,000 a year. Right now it's almost at the major level at 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. So yes, flying training is expensive, um, but I think because the industry realizes that training is expensive and they need pilots, the airlines also are trying to help the future uh, student pilots get into training by. Uh, by uh, providing incentives and bonuses right, and, and right. incentives and things like that. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a great opportunity there right now, so that's why you decided to move up, even though if you are like late 40. And then yes. you talk to the uh, the airlines, you already talk to the uh, the, the flight school that, that they say, yeah, you're good to go. And actually, you saw the uh, some aged people got a job. Right. 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 And then um, 50s and 60s got yes. a job. That was unbelievable, you know. So um, that's great. So it really is a, it's a pilot market right now, and um, the only thing you'll be concerned with is uh, your medical. So if you that's can right. get a class one medical, why not? Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, back then, um, because of difficulties and the, the pay and things like that, it was probably um, something not to think about as mm -hmm. an older person with a family, mm -hmm. but because of the hiring situation right now and the piling shortage, it really is an open field for anybody that has an interest in it. That's right. So it would be, a, if you're a young person, in your 20s, or an older person, late 30s, early 40s, it really is an open playing field for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. I've heard, uh, you know, late 50s, early 60 year olds getting hired as well. <laughs> I mean, it's when I say it's that bad, the airlines really need uh, pilots because if they can't crew the airplane, they have to cancel flights. And that's less revenue, less profit for the uh, airline as well. That oh, makes sense. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I still can't believe that, you know, the 40, 50 years old, the new first officer get a job. You know, when talking about the 20 some years ago, because right. when I tried to be the airline pilot so bad 20 years ago, I need to build a minimum, you know, 5,000 hours to apply Gosh. for the major, but right. not anymore. Right. So as soon as they reach the 1,500 hours, they just moved on, right? So in this case, yeah, so uh, so from flight instructor, you achieve, uh, so let me rewind, sorry. So at about 500 hours, when you're instructing, the airlines have a pretty good idea, and they're somehow following your progress through the pipeline, so you'll start to receive emails and you know invites and things like that come fly for them, and then what they're trying to do is entice you to go fly for them at 500 hours. Mm -hmm. At 1500 hours, a lot of these guys already have a job offer, mm -hmm. so once they reach that point, they will resign from their flight school, go fly from the regional. Um, the upgrade time, depending on the airlines, anywhere from one and a half to two years to go from first officer to captain. 
And I think uh, once they achieve, uh, was it four to 5,000 hours, that's about what, one to two years, um, they'll hopefully try to move up to a major airline. And so you're thinking if you go from zero to major in what, I don't know, five, six years total, probably, mm -hmm. which is unheard of. Wow. That's, that's pretty crazy. That's good. That's, so, that's very good. Right. So at the same time, too, um, my ultimate goal is to fly for a Japanese airline in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we said earlier, the, even the Japanese airlines are starting to feel the crunch on you know manpower shortage and things mm -hmm. like that, too. So i um, not too sure about the pay and things like that, but would love to fly for any of the major airlines in Japan. Something I always want to do, using my language and things like that. Yeah. But uh, if you ever had a, a, a hankering or, or wish to do something like that, like I said a million times already, right now is the time to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You showed me the website the other day that, that there's a lot of Japanese airline hiring right. foreign pilots who it doesn't have to be foreign, it just right. pilot qualified pilots. Exactly. Right. Thousand you know, yeah. hours for jet time or sure. the type of rating. Right. It can it can achieve at the United States if you got an airline job in the right. United States, right? right. Yep. All right. Um, that reminds me of one other the pilot who names Kenji. Um, right. Let's talk about that because the, um, the Facebook guys. Facebook readers say, oh, that's great, miracle story. Right. Um, so you station at the um, uh, Arizona, right. and uh, you are on the way back to Okinawa, right. via San Francisco and Anita, yep. United Airlines, right. 787, Yes. as a passenger. Yes, so I was a passenger, and uh, like everything else, I was so excited to come back to Okinawa and see my family, that uh, once I boarded the flight, um, like everything else, I'm, I'm sure every, our, our listeners have heard this, you know, the captain comes on like, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'll be the captain of this flight, and my co-pilot, or my first officer, is so-and-so. Well, when they made that announcement, I heard the name Kenji Matsuda. And right then and there, I knew I had to meet this guy, because as you know, Matsuda is an Okinawan name. Mm -hmm. And here I am, going to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, I will definitely want to meet this guy if I could be the last person off this airplane. Fast forward a little bit, um, the flight takes off, everything's great, um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, I had a one or two glasses of wine, was really enjoying myself. Uh, one or two glasses became three or four glasses. <laughs> and uh, oh, about a third of the way through flight, I kind of fainted. I'm not sure how, a little bit of turbulence. Um, and when I came to, I had fainted for about three to four minutes. When I came to, um, the crew was helping me feel better. Uh, and the first officer came off the flight deck and it was Kenji Matsuda. So I was actually glad I met him because I had drank too much wine. <laughs> so if I didn't drink wine, I would not meet him. But long story short, uh, Amelia talked to him, explained who I was, where I was going, and Amelia asked for a, uh, a business card. And as you know, uh, I came back to Okinawa, and like every time, I come to see you because you're my friend, and uh, you could probably finish the store if you like. But, okay. You know. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I got the um, story about that, and then got, you said, hey, here's the name card. And I got the name card from you with the United. Right. Kenji Matsuda. Oh, that's... As soon as I saw that name card, you can tell my face has oh changed. My God. Oh, yeah. I thought something was wrong. <laughs> but I was like, oh, Nick, this is my student. Oh, my gosh. I the... used to fly with him. God, I mean, the world got small really quick. Yeah, he started the Aero Club. He walked in as an Air Force uniform that uh, he wanted to be a pilot. Okay. And then uh, he started private pilot training. I think he finished private at the Kadena. Wow. And then he got a job at the uh, Air Force uh, flying job. Okay. Then I met him at the, uh, the Honolulu. I think he flies C-17 or something. Okay. Then uh, we've been contacting each other because, because he's originally from Okinawa. So okay. he want to be an airline pilot somewhere in Okinawa, maybe Japan, just like you. So we've been contacting him so long. Then, then I said, well, wait a minute, Nick. I got an email from him, like right. in New Year's. Right. You know, so I got the uh, email back and they re replied to him with a picture. Right. And he replied me right away. He did, yeah. Hey, Tom, I remember Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> and then, wow, what a war, small world. Very small world. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we decided to meet up again end of this month. Gotcha. In December, I mean, of January. Right. So sometime. In the future, sure. Because I knew coming back and forth all the time, yes. right? Yeah. So eventually, because he coming back and forth all the because his family's in Okinawa. Okay. So hopefully in the future, sure, we can get, get together. Absolutely. To talk about you know the funny story. Absolutely. All right. Well, I know you're gonna go back to the states pretty soon. Yes. And have a safe trip back, and okay. then I make a 
good flight training over there. I get your private, and yeah. everything. I hope I can meet up here Absolutely. again on the radio station. Definitely. Got the SC of Final Flight Instructor. My pleasure. I will definitely like to do a before and after version. Okay. All right. And yeah, maybe you can teach me something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's excellent. Thank you very yeah. much for Thank your you. time. Thank you.